You know, Christy, I love February because it contains two of my favorite annual events. What? Groundhog Day Uh and the State of the Union Address. One involves a meaningless ritual in which we look to a notoriously unreliable mammal for prognostication with no basis in reality. The other involves a groundhog. (laughs) Hi, I'm Christy. And I'm Edith. We're backyard gardeners from Colorado. And neighbors. And friends. These days, gardening has gotten very popular. And we've noticed more and more people picking our brains for tips and troubleshooting about gardening. We're not experts. We just learned a lot about gardening from the mistakes we made along the way. So welcome to Upside Down Tulips. A fun podcast that celebrates gardening gone wrong. Upside Down. Hello, Christy. Hello, Edith. Here we are again, Upside Down Tulips time. Episode 75, Edith. Whoa, I'm exhausted. (laughs) (laughs) We're here, the cats are here, the cats are digging in my houseplants per usual. Christy, did you know that February 22nd is World Spay Day? As in spaying uh, your cats and dogs? As in spaying, yeah, as in spaying males. Did you also know the other thing it is, is Be Humble Day, mm-hmm. which is appropriate because I think if you're spayed, <laughs> makes you a little more humble. Yes. Don't you think? I love how you can bring things together like that, Edith. I love connections. Yeah. Don't so you? So good. Yeah. So, you know, I'm so incredibly tired today. You are? Because, folks, we recorded this, we we're recording on a Friday, and so last night I went to the theater to see a play, and then I had to watch... Figure skating. Have you been watching the Olympics at all? I have, but I've been doing shows at night, so so the answer is no, not live anyway. Well, I stayed up until I past t- midnight wow. to watch all this. It was so good, but now I'm super tired. Well, I'm going to try to find it on the computer. Okay, so we're both exhausted. Well, that, that, that bodes well. <laughs> hey, Edith. Yeah? We got an Apple Podcast review. Is it good? Because that'll perk me up. If it's bad, I'm leaving and I am not coming back. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. It's good. It is from MJF3000, Uh which sounds like a vacuum cleaner. Or a sports car. Yeah. Oh, Mm -hmm. that's true. Mm -hmm. Um, And and this person says, this podcast has changed my life. Oh, wow. I discovered this podcast in summer 2021. I've been working from home for over a year because of COVID and was gardening because I had the time. And it was a very zen activity for me. But I knew so very little. Christy and Edith provide infotainment in the best way. I've listened and re-listened to every episode and use it as a guide for experimentation in the garden and further research. That's so nice. Yeah. Yeah, that's wonderful. Thank you so much for giving us that because it really helps us in our numbers. What numbers? Well, it helps people find us more. Oh, good, good, good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's excellent. Uh, what's going on in your garden, Edith? Almost nothing, <laughs> you know, <laughs> since it snowed. Like, it's snowing all the time now. Remember when we were complaining there was no snow? Yes, you even wrote a beautiful thing about it snowed. Now it's like, it snowed. <laughs> well, I did one thing. I plant, I winter sowed one jug of cabbage. Nice. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> one. That's good. It's a start. Yeah, I, I haven't, that much is happening for me either. I'm going to do a little bit more winter sowing, I think, in the next couple of weeks. Yeah. Um, which, folks, is an, is an outdoor method of seed starting. Uh, however, I did start to do just a little bit of spring cleanup this week because we had some days in the 50s and I had areas of my garden that didn't have any snow in it. So I um, just pulled away some things around the iris beds. Good. Just oh, good. a little bit. Uh, Folks, if you're doing that, just make sure that you don't do a really strong spring cleanup, depending upon your zone, because you don't want to disturb the ladybugs and the and the bees and the and the and the butterflies. Things things are hiding in there; they're sleeping in there. Yeah. So I cleared away. I cleared away. Um, the I started clearing away the iris beds. Get. I'm getting itchy though. Yeah, I I am too, actually. Um. I, I cannot look at another seed catalog or I'm going to end up spending $1,000. <laughs> I 
I just can't. <laughs> who was it that said? We had somebody who write in and said they called it garden porn, right? Yeah, it Tea is. Isn't it? it really is. <laughs> Yeah, it's very dangerous for gardeners right now to go into nurseries or look at seed catalogs with a little bit of walking around money. Yeah, huh? yeah, or a credit card. Yeah, they look so pretty, all those seed packets. Oh, they! I love them. Especially like botanical interests. They have those beautiful illustrations on them. And, uh-huh. Uh, you know, Edith, last week we talked about the black communities responsible for so many contributions to horticulture, uh-huh. plant sciences, gardening, and nature. Yeah. And uh, I shared the story of Edmund Albius, who is um, a, a person in the um, Indian Ocean who discovered a new way of, of uh, propagating vanilla. Uh-huh. Well, I have another person to lift up today from okay. the black community. Have you ever wondered, Edith, how a seed knows which direction to go up so that it could reach toward the sun? Or how do, does a plant even know how to leaf at all? Well, these are the kind of questions that captivated a scientist named Marie Clark Taylor. Yeah. And she was she lived from 1911 to 1990. She was the first African-American woman to gain a Ph.D. in botany. Wow, okay. And she was the first woman of any race to gain a Ph.D. in science from Fordham University. Wow. And she was the head of botany at Howard University and um, always a teacher in her heart. She focused a lot of her career on improving science education for boys and girls. And she developed a summer program, Edith, for high school teachers that encouraged them to use new scientific techniques and methods such as using real botanical materials. Wow. And light microscopes to study living cells. And how did she figure did she figure out which way how a seed knows? Yeah, she spent most of her life exploring about plants and the relationship to the sun. Can you tell me how? <laughs> <laughs> Because I'm really curious now, or is that too scientific? That's too scientific for me. Well, you know what? It's I like the fact that you are lifting up people, that you're lifting up the African American community. You're you're like the bra, really, for the African American <laughs> community. Oh, that's such an honor. Well, yes, as we talked is. about before, is that sometimes people think that gardening is only a very expensive hobby for rich white people. It's how people used to eat. Exactly. That's how it started. Yes. Absolutely. And so uh, a thank you to everything that Marie Clark Taylor contributed to our gardens today. Thank you. Well, folks, we got a real treat for everybody this week because we have a brand new old woman who lived in a shoe starring Billy McBride. And this has been, we've, we've shared this before with the garden party, right, Edith? Yes. So they've heard it before. But nobody else has ever heard it. So we're going to premiere it today. The old woman who lived in a shoe. And what a journey she's got on, huh, Edith? She sure has. Yeah. And I actually think that the actor, Billy McBride, I think she was really instrumental in inspiring me to take her on a longer journey because she's so good. She is the Judy Dench of Denver. She really is. She's and folks, there's keep listening because there's nine of them. Right, yeah. right. So we've just we're just scratching the surface about yeah. more of what the old woman's going to do. And if you ever want to get pod plays before everybody else does, all you have to do is join the garden party, which is these are people who are patrons, our sponsors. They um, send us some money every month so that we can keep doing what we're doing. And we have a shout out this week, Edith. Right? We do have a shout out. Uh, a, a new patron is Trish from Strasburg, Colorado. Have you ever been to Strasburg, Edith, out there on I-70 in the eastern plains of Colorado? I think I've been through it. Yeah. 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 Cute little town. Well, Trish, thank you so much for joining the garden party. And everybody enjoy The Old Woman Goes to the Gym. Hi, I'm the old woman who lived in a shoe. So I've been on this journey from living in a shoe to living in a house when I married Jack Spratt, from eating nothing but ding-dongs and jujubes to growing my own lettuce. I even quit smoking cigarettes. Haven't had even one little puff. Do I still want to smoke that disgusting, smelly, lung-choking stuff? Are you kidding? 
yes. Like a flower wants the sun, like a bee wants pollen, like a movie star wants flattering lightning. I want a cigarette. <sighs> There are times a green bean, which is what I'm sucking on now, doesn't do it. It's been my cigarette substitute, and it turns out green beans are a gateway drug to asparagus and arugula. So I'm full of vitamins, which is great, but I still feel kind of jumpy, tense, and like I could chew nails and spit out Brillo pads. So today, I'm going to tell you how I overcame my craving for a cigarette. You see, I was just about to sneak a smoke when my friend old Mother Hubbard stopped by. Since I started to garden, I give her produce, cause her cupboards are bare and all. And by the way, I found out she has a first name. It's Imogene. Who knew? So she says, hey, I got two free passes to this new fitness place. It says it will give us a good body. You want to come with? Sure, I said. Maybe this will help with my nicotine withdrawal, I'm thinking. So we're in this new, shiny fitness center. And this beautiful young thing bounces up to us. Actually, the only thing bouncing is her hair, which has lots of body but no other part of her body moves one bit. She's of a piece firm. And she says, hi, I'm your personal trainer. My name is Janie, with a Y. And old Mother Hubbard goes, hi, Janie, I'm Imogene with an IQ. <laughs> I thought it was funny. Janie did not. Her revenge was putting us through a workout that curdled me noddles if you know what I mean. She told us we'd have to do squat thrusts, burpees, and planks. A squat thrust? That sounds kind of dirty, especially if you burpee while you're squatting, which at my age I am wont to do. But we did it. Me and old Mother Hubbard squatted and thrusted and so on, and then we were pumping iron, and I look at old Mother Hubbard and I says, Why do I even need a good body? I'm married. We laughed so hard, we dropped our barbells. <laughs> At which point, Yaney told us our session was over. So we left, and the next day I was sore, so sore, so sore I couldn't smoke a cigarette because it hurt too much to raise my arm to my mouth. So, it's not a permanent solution for keeping off cigarettes. I'll keep working on finding one and let you know how it goes, because I feel like we're friends now. Anyone who is a friend of upside-down tulips is also a friend of mine. The Old Woman Who Goes to the Gym by Edith Weiss. Good job, Edith. Oh, Christy, thank you. And uh, folks, don't forget to check out our website for the funny and informative Upside Down Dictionary at UpsideDownTulips.com if there are ever words or terms you're not familiar with. Yeah, and you know what? There's always going to be a link in our show notes mm. that'll take you really interesting places you don't even know. <laughs> and, you know, Christy goes through a lot of work making that look beautiful, so click on those links. Plus, hey, what else do we have? Well, this week we have a picture of your Bokashi bucket experiment oh, on Facebook. Okay. Because people asked for it, so there it is. There it is, folks. And uh, and this week we're talking about greens. I love greens. Growing greens, growing a salad bowl. Mm -hmm. Um, The thing about what, what we're trying to do, what I try to do is I'm my goal is to have nine months of fresh greens. Wow. In Colorado. And you know what, Christy? I think it can be done. Yeah. And really, the only three months you're talking about are the, is the Persephone period when you have less than 10 hours of yes. sunlight a day. Thank you. Yes. Yes, indeed. Um, I'm sure you've been to the grocery store lately and noticed what they're charging for lettuce and greens. It's insane. It's, it's, uh, if you do it right, it's cheaper 
to grow your own greens. Much, much cheaper, actually. And also, they taste better. They taste way, way better. Because when you're getting the greens at the grocery store, they're not picking them when they're correct to be picked. They're picking them kind of early, on the early side mm-hmm. or not at the right uh, peak of ripeness. And so yeah. you can go out and pick when you want to. And you have your soil, which is yeah. going to be better than a commercial farmer soil. There's nothing like garden to mouth. There's just nothing like it. Yeah. And don't let, you know, you go to the grocery store and everything is encased in a hard plastic, most of which can't even be recycled. So you yeah. also take that out of the picture. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and greens are so good for you. Yeah, they really are. They, your doctors are always telling you, right? Eat more greefy vegetables. Greefy or leafy? Greefy. Grief-stricken <laughs> vegetables. I'm not doing that, Christy. <laughs> um, I'm feeling greefy. <laughs> I love it. That's awesome. Uh, Greefy green Mm -hmm. vegetables are brimming with fiber and vitamins and minerals. And if you eat more leafy greens, they can protect you from many diseases, including heart disease, diabetes, cancer, and help you live longer. You know what I heard? I heard that eating a salad is like having a brush inside your body that takes everything out. Keeps things moving. Keeps things moving, as it were. Well, okay. Shall we get into what we grow? We thought we would talk about our favorite types of greens because looking in my seed catalog, I realized there are probably a hundred, at least, different kinds of lettuces. Oh, my gosh. Christy, there's so many pages and pages and pages. So I thought, well, here here's one of my favorites because it's one of the it's one of the earliest that you can plant. It's the endive, mm. also called escarole. Have you ever planted that? I never have, but I love eating it. I do too. It's a little it's a little more um, sharper of a taste than uh-huh. lettuce, but to me, as soon as the soil can be worked, you get out there and you plant it. It also is good in containers. Um, We're really going to stress containers today for people that only do container gardening. Oh, that's another great reason to grow greens is because they do so well in containers. Because they they have very uh, shallow roots. Yes. And so if your container is at least four inches deep and has drainage holes, you can grow lettuces in it. That's a wonderful point, Christy. That's really good. The endive will... Take it's ready in sixty to ninety days. So let's say that that next let's say in two weeks, Christy, the soil will be able to be worked. Uh huh. Right. That is the beginning of March. That means that March in the very beginning of May, at the latest, you can have endive. Wonderful. Pretty nice, right? That's great. Yeah. And the other thing about lettuces, there are two ways to harvest them. You can you can harvest them as babies. Uh When you go to the store, there's that baby leaf stuff, or you can let them grow. And we will comment on the plants that you can eat both ways. Can you do that with endive? I think that you can, but I don't know if you should. Okay, Okay, gotcha. Yeah. And um, how how closely should you grow endive? Um, Okay, that's a good question. And I'm going to look at my seed packet here because I don't have everything memorized because I'm not a botanist. I'm just a little amateur gardener. Okay. Seed spacing, one inch. Mm, mm -hmm. Now, if you hear, here's another kind of a rule about greens. You can plant them really close together if your goal is, I just want the baby leaves. Uh Uh-huh. Or you plant them further apart and thin them as necessary, and then you can get a whole head of something. You know, I think I I probably sow my lettuce seeds too close together, Uh and I I think that's always been my tragedy is I just don't, I have trouble thinning. but with with lettuces, yeah, it's great to do that because yes. then you just can eat them. Christy, I don't think you should use the word tragedy. I think you should just, you should say griefy. Okay, from now on, you bet. It's my griefy. And the, the other thing about um, greens that I want to mention right now is that they're double crop. You, they're a spring, and then you can plant them in the fall. Right. Yeah. Um. So therefore, that's how you can get your nine months of greens. Yep. Throughout the whole year. Yep. Um, great. Okay, what 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 do you have on your list of your favorites? Well, I love spinach. And it's funny because when I was a kid, I didn't know what fresh spinach was. In fact, 
you know, bless my mom's heart because she worked all the time. We didn't have a vegetable that didn't come from a can. So you had Popeye spinach. Yeah, that's, yeah. yeah. And if you eat that, you think that's just the worst stuff in the world. But yeah. once I started realizing how wonderful fresh spinach is. Yeah. Um, and sometimes my spinach, Edith, will overwinter. Sometimes mine does too. Which is not always right in the zone. It's a, it's a symbol of climate change. Yeah. Um, and I will start putting my spinach out usually around um, St. Patrick's Day. That's when I do it too. Um, and yeah. this can also be a general rule for greens, folks, is that um, the climate, it can, the, the highs during the day can be as low as 40. Mm-hmm. But greens in general, their, hap- their sweet spot is 60 to 65. And the soil is also important. They won't germinate if the soil is too cold or too hot. And they need six to eight hours of sunlight. Yeah. So is it possible to grow spinach or lettuce in partial shade, like three to four hours? Uh, sure, but they will, they'll be happier if you're in the 60 to 65 range. So around St. Patrick's Day is when we were kind of consistently mm-hmm. getting days in yeah. the fifties. Make sure, folks, you check when you when you buy a packet of seeds. Really study the back of it because these rules for when to plant and shade and whatnot vary with every single with with the different varieties. Of That's stuff. a great point. And you also could, if you want to get a head start, some people put plastic or fabric on their soil, mm-hmm. Edith, to help heat things up to capture. The, the solar energy from the sun. Yeah. And also that can protect from cool night areas too. Um, the spinach bread I like to use is, um, this is called Salad Sensation Hybrid from Burpee. I also like this one, which is, oh, this is a new one I got. This is called Laviwa. And it is frost tolerant, it says. And it can happen in 28 to 45 days. 28 to 45 days, that's like a radish. Yeah. That sounds amazing. So we'll see how La Viva does this year. How do you spell that? L-A-V-E-W-A. I've never even heard of that. Yeah, that's going to be. And it also says it has heat tolerance and mildew tolerance. So we'll see how. I cannot wait to see how that thing goes. And I just love spinach. Speaking of spinach, I have a odd spinach on my list. I have a perpetual spinach Swiss chard. Oh, yes. I've never heard of it before. I was going through the catalog and I'm like, ooh, this sounds so So interesting. Is a Swiss chard part of the spinach family? Is Swiss chard? I don't think so. Okay. I don't think so. This says truly a chard, but tastes more like spinach. Okay, gotcha. Listen to this. Now, you know how, how I love the Swiss chard because they're so tolerant of frost and of heat. This yields from late spring through autumn. Ooh. So in place, early spring to midsummer, in rich, most moist, moist. Whoa. Yay, enrich, moist. <laughs> Shout out to moist. Enrich, moist. <laughs> I have a hard time saying the word. Well, you know, sometimes it can be difficult saying words. Like, yes. Like green and leafy. <laughs> yes, it can. <laughs> Thank you for the reminder. So anyway, this is what I'm, this is my new one that I'm going to try. Oh, fun. Spinach Swiss chard, along with my regular Swiss chard. Hey, Ida, tell us about corn salad. Corn salad is also called mache um, or lamb's salad. And to tell you the truth, you know, I've been looking at seed store, seeds in different stores, and I haven't seen any corn salad. I just have a couple of seeds left. In my garden, it used to seed itself. Ooh. And I would have the early, it's like a rosette, maybe three inches at at the biggest. Uh Uh-huh. And... It would come in, it could grow under the snow. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And it can, I used to be able to get it in February. This year I am going to sow it because I, it's just stopped. I haven't seen as much of it recently. Uh Uh-huh. And um, it likes the cold. It's also great for containers. Oh yeah? And also you can start it in a seed tray. You can even grow the whole thing in a seed tray. Like you said, all you need is four inches. Because these things are little, but they're also have a buttery taste and a thicker leaf than most lettuces. I love I love them so much. Now, how long when you grow corn salad, Edith, 
will it last? Because, you know, eventually a lot of these mm-hmm. lettuces, folks, they don't like the heat. Nope. This one hates the heat. So how long will you, will it grow until it probably peters out? If it comes, if it, if it comes in, um, like if I start seeing it late February, early March, it starts going away in May. Okay. Another good thing about it is you don't have to sow it. You broadcast it. You take a handful of seeds, throw them on the ground, and then cover it with an eighth to a fourth inch of fine soil. I'm glad you brought that up, Edith, because friends, when you are sowing, usually the general rule in all these type of greens and lettuces is that you don't want to cover them too deep. No. Mm-mm. I think that I've said this before, is that you only want to do it like it's about like twice its twice its depth of the seed. And if you look at lettuce seeds, they're the tiniest little seeds, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, they're so tiny. They're yeah. so tiny. And so you barely want to cover them. Yeah. Like you said, an eighth to a quarter of an inch. Yeah. No more than that because they need a little sun to germinate. Yeah, they do. Hey, tell us about arugula, which I started growing because of you. Uh, arugula, also a very expensive salad when you order it in restaurants, right? Yeah. Um, I, uh, I have been growing arugula and mine would reseed itself for probably the last 20 years. It would reseed itself? Yeah. 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 It actually has really pretty seed pods that it kind of turned kind of purpley. Um, I remembered the flowers. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I hope mine does. The one I planted last year. Um, the kind I have here is a kind of a classic. It's called arugula wild rocket. I got this from Botanical Seeds. Um, I will probably sow this in March also, or as soon as, I, you know, I feel like the temperatures get up into the 50s. Mm-hmm. Um, this likes to be grouped together. So you want to sow like three seeds, they say every four, six inches. But I just sort of broadcast mine in little rows and then thin out as I go. Mm-hmm. When they're and this can be true for, for many greens, is that when they are small, like you've said, Edith, baby greens or microgreens, you can eat them and enjoy mm-hmm. them. And these can also be a cut and come again type of plant, mm-hmm. which means that you and you want to take the little baby greens and just take the whole thing out as you're thinning, or you can take out the outer leaves as you go. Or sometimes throughout the year, I'll just give it a, I call it, I'm going to give it a haircut. Mm-hmm. You want to harvest arugula pretty regularly because if you don't, um, it'll start to bolt, which means that the plant will put its energy towards making seeds. The way you know something's going to bolt in the greens family, a stalk starts to form in the very middle of the plant, and that's going to flower and turn to seed, making the leaves of the plant bitter. And, and, And of course, taste is a big aspect of that too. So, and in that, if that's the case, if your arugula or your other lettuces start bolting, um, you can just pull it out and throw it in the compost pile, or you can let it go to seed and collect, collect the seeds. seeds or let them do what they do because you've had lettuce that you just let go to seed and you had 150 leads of, yeah, that leads of, it lead, leads of hedis. Leads of hedis. That's what I, <laughs> <laughs> Christy, one other important thing about arugula is it is one of the plants that can do successive planting because it can tolerate the heat better than most and the cold. So you can, you know, every three weeks, if you've used it all up, you can plant it again and have it for months and months. So you don't have your arugula bolting and then you yeah. don't have any more arugula. You can plant more. And that's true for a lot of other greens too, I think, Edith, that you can yeah. do succession, successive, yeah, succession, succession planting. planting for Yes. It. I want to talk about my blue dwarf blue curled vates mm. kale. Oh, I love this little kale. This is, let me see, six weeks before the last frost date, which means that our frost date is mid May, mid March. We can plant this, and in 60 days, you will have kale, and it also works great in containers. That's why I like this variety that you have because you said it's a dwarf. Yeah. Variety. Yep. Because I've grown kale before, which I really like having, but boy, it can take up so much space. So much space in your garden. I planted the lacinato last year, which they also call dinosaur. It's gigantic. <laughs> it's Hence the so name, right? Big. Yes. <laughs> like one plant is overwhelming. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this year, for the first time, Edith, I'm growing romaine. 
That's exciting. Have That's, you grown romaine before? I have, and I've also grown it in containers, and it works really oh. well. Well, this is this was actually one of my goals for the year when we talked about um, our plans for 2022 garden because uh-huh. I realized that I eat a, I eat a romaine salad almost every day. So why not grow so it? So why not grow it, for heaven's sakes? The kind I got, friends, is called the Paris Island Cause, and it is also a frost-tolerant 21 to 68 days. So twenty. that probably means that it, they're little when at yes. 21, right? Yeah. So you can eat the thinnings, as with all greens. And it says, so in early spring through fall. So this must be also, like we talked about, succession planting. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and... It says that you can direct sow outside two to four weeks before your average frost date. So I think I'm going to – that looks like, though, that looks like April, though, doesn't it? That looks it? like April. That looks that like, looks like April, April. for we're, we're zone 5B, so. Uh-huh. But it also says I can sow in the fall and the winter, so. I might try this. I might try winter sowing it. You know what? Try winter sowing it. Try it in a container, too, because when it gets hot and crispy – you can just move the container into the into the shade. Oh, that's a great point. You know, so so yeah. do it uh, more than one way. And don't forget, Edith, you can also put, uh, there's other things you can do to shade your veggies if the hot sun is. Oh, absolutely. Uh, my favorite thing to do is to put a lawn chair over my lettuce area. Hence, hence one of our favorite categories in our garden party. The lawn chair lettuces. The lawn chair lettuces. I want to talk about, just to remind people. The Marvel of Four Seasons, which is my favorite lettuce of all time. It's the one that reseeded itself, and I counted 150 plants in my garden last year. (laughs) And it has heat and cold tolerance, which is unusual for lettuce. And it's delicious. Oh, it's purple. And it's successive. I didn't know it was purple. Yeah. Oh, I love that. It's so pretty. Two to four weeks before the last frost date. Um, And then you can do succession planting. Every three weeks until four to six weeks before the frost. That's one other thing about greens I think is so nice too, is that they are so beautiful. Oh my gosh, yes. The different colors you have. I had this sort of salad blend lettuce and it comes in purples and green colors. And Mm -hmm. I just think, you know, as as wonderful it is to eat it, we also eat with our eyes, Edith, right? Kind of. You could say that. That sounds gross (laughs) to me, but sure. (laughs) I want to talk about one more variety, uh-huh. and then maybe we should talk about just a little bit about side dressing and composting, et cetera. Yeah. The lat, my new one that I'm going to try is called a Gustav sa- Gustav's salad. It was bred by a Dutchman. It's a butter lettuce, mm. and it 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 just it just looks amazing, and I cannot wait to try it. Gustav's salad lettuce. That looks awesome. Um, and what do you do if you have pests on your you know, luckily lettuce. for me, I don't have a lot of pests. I've had slugs. I put out plates of beer for the <laughs> slugs because they like beer and then they drowned in the beer happy. Um, I, I refuse to use any kind of pesticide or insecticide on my lettuce or on anything, actually. Yeah, I highly, I highly recommend soapy water. Soapy water is good. Spray we've, got it off. Some, we've got some organic sprays on our, on our website. Mm-hmm. That you can look up, that you could just make out of household items. Plant flowers that attract the kind of mm-hmm. things that will eat these little bugs. Mm-hmm. And also, don't forget, allow a little chewing. What's wrong with a little chewing? Nothing. Nothing is wrong with just a little chewing. Just wash your greens when you bring them yeah. inside, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> good point. I've made that mistake, for sure. Now, because we've mentioned how shallow the roots are, so they're not going to go down deep for nutrients, which is one of the reasons it's so important to compost. Before planting, dig some holes, throw some compost in, and then once they've started growing, side dress it with compost and or compost tea, which you make by putting compost in a bucket, adding water, let it steep. Let it, is it steep or steep? Oh, it's steep. Seep would mean it's it's, it's leaking. It's leaky. Yeah. It's not oozing. Right. Anyway, uh, they they do recommend doing that. Uh, it's good if you have uh, good drainage if you're so in your soil. Yes, you have to have so drainage if or it'll if, rot. If you find that you're having challenges growing lettuces in your garden, you may yeah. want to do a soil test. Yes, and that's another reason why I think that lettuce does so great in containers because you're probably using a kind of potting soil, which is lighter and drains really well. Right, 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 right. And right. when all the lettuce is done and it's too hot, Edith, yes. and your shade techniques don't work anymore, 
and you've taken out the lettuce and you've put it in the compost bin, what do you put in its place? Well, you can put anything, but um, well, you can put anything in its place. I like I to guess. put I like to put beans. Beans are good because beans like to be hot. But people grow Swiss chard because that can be your greens after everything else is dead. Oh, that's crispy. great. Swiss chard does not get. I still have a live one in my garden today. Wow. Yeah. They, they'll, they'll, they'll tolerate absolutely anything. Let us stop talking about lettuce. But it's fun. <laughs> it, I like it. <laughs> Grow it, everybody. You will not be sorry at all. Hey, Edith. What, what, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> I didn't expect you to say, hey, Edith, right then. Oh, what, what is it, Christy? Guess what time it is. What is it? It's mailbag time. Ring, ring. Okay. This week's letter comes from our friend Chris from Denver. He wrote, Dear Upside DT. Ah, down two lips. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he said, I don't know what to call these. Did I leave them in the ground too long? The flesh is milder and blotched with red. Now, he sent us a picture. So you uh -huh. may be wondering what he's talking about. I don't know what to call these. He sent us a picture of his radishes. Did I leave them in the ground too long? <laughs> the flesh is milder and blotched with red. Now, um, are they gigantic? Are they really big? Can you tell? Yeah, I've got. Yeah, you have a picture in your. Do I? Yeah. Oh, Christy, look, he has a ruler right next to it. Yes. Oh my God, they look gigantic. They look like beets. Are but they they're beets? not beets, no. I don't think they're beets of the wrong color. Right. Yeah, that's right. And the right. wrong leaves. Okay, so right. they, they've been in the ground, it looks like, way too long. Yeah, it's a common thing that I do with radishes is that I leave them in the ground way too long. Radishes can be one of the easiest and fastest vegetables to grow in your mm -hmm. garden, uh -huh. but they can be kind of a little fussy about their conditions. Um, spring and fall are the best time to grow them. If you find that they are tough and woody, it meant that you left them in too long. And you left them in, yeah, and it got hot. Too. Oh, right. And yes, that's hot. true, too. Yeah. The same thing can be true if you find them that they're too spicy. Um, even though some sp radishes are spicier mm -hmm. than others. I'm going to grow a wasabi radish this year. Oh, my gosh. That's I awesome. can't wait. That sounds good. But um, radishes like cool weather, um, but it needs to be warm and wet enough for them to fill out before the weather really heats up. Unlike carrots and beets, radishes do not get sweeter if stored in the ground. If you leave them in too long, they'll just get spicier. Yes, and woody and pithy and awful. D believe the seed packet when it says twenty-five days. Just yeah. believe the seed packet because you don't want you. Don't, that's not something that you want to leave in there overly long. I've also had it where my radishes have gotten cracked. Yeah, that doesn't bother me. Does that bother you? No, it doesn't. But no. it just, the folks want to know it's the result of uneven watering. Oh, that would be my name. Edith, uneven <laughs> watering wise. Yeah, it just means it just means it's not going to be the prettiest thing. And sometimes you can have all leaves and no bulbs. Oh, and that is usually the it's, it's just too hot. Aha! Yes, it is. Yes, and they'll just bolt and go straight to seed, which I've done that before too. Where I've I've seen the radishes yes. they have bolted, they're going to seed, and I pull them out. And they're a root. It's, yeah, that's right. <laughs> they're it's a, a root, root. of that's a right. radish. <laughs> I am root. I am root. <laughs> I am root. And that's all that it is. So um, the answer to Chris's question is, in one word, yes. yes. <laughs> and folks, if you have questions for us or want to share us pictures of your garden or have advice for us, all you need to do is write to us at Upside down tulips at Gmail. And you know what? We were thinking about doing an episode of people's flops and funny stories in the garden. So we're not going to do it if we don't get letters. So send them on in. Or check out our website. <laughs> <laughs> You're fine. You're good. At upside down, tul upside down tulips were actually Christy's mistake for people that didn't go all the way back to the beginning with us. You, you planting upside down tulips was your funny gardening mistake. Oh, yes, it was. Goofball. Sorry. Sorry. Goof, You're talking about literal upside down tulips. Oh, Christy, yes, everything I say is literal. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Good to know. <laughs> There's snow on the ground. I'm ready for spring. 
I need some inspiration. Edith, inspire us. What a beautiful lead-in, because you have no idea what I'm going to say. Do you? Uh-oh. What a beautiful lead-in. No, okay. truly, oh. Christy. Okay. I'm being literal. It's oh. beautiful. <laughs> okay, good. I want this, this inspiration is to thank the people that have been listening to us and shoring us up through this long pandemic. Okay? Here we go. Spring will come, and so will happiness. Hold on. Life will get warmer. By Anita Krizan, author. Nice. See how good your intro was? That was freaky. That was freaky, indeed. Well, you reached another episode of Freaky Upside Down Tulips. We are Edith Weiss and Christy Montour Larson. Would you do us a favor by sending us some money? Joining the Garden Club would be nice. Sure. <laughs> or at the very least, friends, can you hit that subscribe, like, or follow button wherever you listen to podcasts? It really makes a difference for us. And thank you so much to Denise Gentilini. She composed and performed the wonderful Upside Down Tulips theme song. If you want more, just go to denisegentilini.com or you can find that link at UpsideDownTulips.com. Thank you for the many talents of our kind friend, Billy McBride, as the old woman. And thanks to our excellent yet enigmatic engineer. And also, we have an excellent and enigmatic local nursery and friend of the show, Southwest Gardens on Harlan Street. Join us next week for the March Punch List, what you should be doing in the garden in March. Now, don't forget, if you make a mistake... Your garden will forgive you. Upside down to this. Or your fargan will gorgive you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Christy. Let's fargan the gargan. Let's I do know. It that way. <laughs> Words were not coming out of my mouth. I know. That was funny. <laughs>